Thank you, Madam Chairman. You know, this country is uh, starved for truth tellers. People in Congress will just tell them what the problems this country face, uh, give them options, uh, and uh, help them make the right choice. People who are strong enough to lead and bold enough to lead at a time where country needs leadership. When it comes to the budget, when it comes to the economy where the president has failed, House Republicans will lead. The Paul Ryan budget helps spur job creation in America today. Stop spending money the government doesn't have. It lifts the crushing burden of debt. And this plan puts the budget on the path to balance in paying down the debt over the long term. And it puts the economy on the path to prosperity. Let's talk about the economy. Uh, it is the number one concern of most people in the debt and deficit have a lot to do with it. Uh, we ha are uh, undergoing one of the worst recoveries we've seen in a long time. It is uh, two to three times slower than uh, the Reagan recovery and there is reason for that. We were told that by the president and congressional Democrats, if we just spent money, spending the stimulus, spend the increased deficits, that the economy recover, would recover. And they were wrong. After spending hundreds of billions of dollars on the stimulus, we have two million fewer jobs in America today than when the stimulus began. We have fewer jobs today than when all that spending took off. We were told if Congress passed all the stimulus that our unemployment rate today would be 6.8 percent. It's 8.8 percent. And only that low because so many people have given up simply looking for work anymore. They've lost hope. And then finally, for those who say we just spend more to create this economy, they were off their predictions by 7 million American jobs. It's time to stop listening to the economists who got it wrong and start listening to economists who got it right. Let's take a look at what spending has done to our economy in America. Here is a chart. It looks back on the last 40 years in America and it tracks federal government spending against job creation along Main Street. Not government jobs, but jobs in the private sector are small, medium, large side businesses that our economy depends upon. The blue line is government spending. The red line are jobs along Main Street. As you can tell, look at the blue line, look at how different job creation is. In fact, over each of these four decades, not only is there no correlation between federal spending and jobs along Main Street, it's a negative correlation in each of the four years. As government spending goes up, jobs along Main Street go down. But look at this next but a chart. We also went back the last four decades in America and asked about private business investment. What happens when companies large and small buy new equipment, buy new software, buy new buildings, invest back in the economy, what happens? Here's the chart. Blue is the private fixed investment from business. The red is job creation along Main Street. And as you can tell, uh, it's a very close correlation. In fact, there is no substitute in America for private investment in the economy. No substitute, no rebates, no stimulus, not shovel-ready projects. Nothing is a substitute for creating jobs like getting businesses to invest back in their workforce, in their workplace, and in the economy. Recently, recently we had, I had the Joint Economic Committee take a look at the last 40 years economic studies of our competitors around the world. Competitors, countries who got themselves in debt trouble and how they worked their way out of it. And, uh, and you would be uh, uh, interested in the results of this study. Uh, what it shows is that uh, three, three key points to it. One is that the countries that were most successful in getting their debt down, getting hold of their financial uh, path, they didn't do it by raising taxes. That didn't succeed. They did it by reducing spending. That's how they best and most successfully got hold of their debt. Uh, I, 21 times in uh, 10 different uh, of our global competitors, countries got a handle of their, on their debt successfully 
by reducing spending. The second takeaway from this study called Spend Less, O Less, Grow the Economy was that countries that got hold of their debt the right way also grew the economy as well. Economists agree that countries that get their financial house in order grow their economy over the long term. What this study shows is that with our competitors, if you get a handle of your spending the right way, you grow it in the short term as well. Um, here is uh, Canada. Neighboring Canada got themselves in financial trouble. Uh, they were, their economy was growing at a paltry less than 1% a year. They lowered their debt as a nation about 12 percentage points. Their economy took off and for uh, almost uh, uh, 14 years, 16 years, they averaged economic growth of almost 3.5%. Sweden, another developed country with a developed economy like ours, they actually had an economy that was shrinking, it was actually contracting. They got a hold of their financial house and put that in order as well, reducing their debt by more than 11 percentage points, and their economy took off, growing 3.5% a year on average uh, for uh, almost a decade. Uh, New Zealand did the same, yes, and you may ask, well, look, uh, we're not Canada, we're not New Zealand, we're not Sweden. But 26 times in nine of our competitors around the world, countries that lowered their debt by reducing spending grew their economy strongly, not just long term, but in the short term. They didn't grow it a little. Those countries uh, rocketed to the top quarter of economic growth in the world. Um, Countries that reduce their spending do it the right way, grow their economy. And here's another third, and again, telling point about this, is that not all spending cuts are the same. When it takes, when it comes time to grow the economy, um, not all spending cuts are the same. What these economists showed is that the nations that grew their economy the most successfully undertook cuts that were large, credible, and difficult to reverse. So they took, they made cuts in savings that mattered. And the cuts and savings that grew the economy make sense. They shrunk their federal workforce. They right-sized it to what they could afford. They eliminated duplicate programs, obsolete programs, uh, as a business would, uh, programs that waste money. Uh, they, uh, they reduced subsidies to corporations and in interfering in the free marketplace. Finally, they tackled their entitlement reforms in health care and in pension. What was interesting was that, that even if the reforms they made in their entitlements didn't affect the current beneficiaries and phased in those reforms over time, it sent the right signal to the marketplace. And what happened in each of these countries is that businesses no longer facing higher taxes because of all that spending felt comfortable getting to reinvest back into their workforce, back into their country, uh, in the economy. Households like ours um, no longer facing higher taxes to pay for all these spending sprees uh, felt more comfortable buying larger ticket items like cars and houses. And as we know, when businesses invest, jobs along Main Street grow. It's clear time and time and time again, like businesses, countries that can handle a hold of their debt, do it the right way and put themselves on a financially sound path, grow. And America's economy can grow as well. The budget resolution presented tonight by Chairman Paul Ryan meets the tests that spending reductions must be large, credible and difficult to reverse once made to boost our economy. The Ryan budget tackles the medical entitlements that are driving federal, federal spending higher. It attacks corporate welfare by phasing out government guarantees to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. It eliminates subsidies for green, green energy and reduces agriculture subsidies by $30 billion over the next decade. The Ryan budget rolls back non-security discretionary spending to its 2008 levels and then freezes it for five years. It adopts a number of the recommendations from the President's own fiscal commission to eliminate waste and achieve real savings in our budget. It eliminates agencies and programs identified by our own government as wasteful and duplicative, and that alone saves over $100 billion in the next decade and reduces the federal workforce, right-sizes the federal workforce by 10 percent over the next five years by attrition, simply by hiring only one new federal employee for every three employees who leave or retire, and, and together that saves almost $400 billion. The Ryan budget envisions a pro-growth tax reform 
that lowers the top income tax rate for both individuals and companies to 25 percent and makes us competitive again in this world. The Ryan budget is a fiscally responsible plan that accelerates economic growth and job creation. It is a game changer for this nation and tells the truth about our challenges and addresses it with ideas and proven solutions that move us forward. With that, uh, Madam Speaker, I'd reserve the balance of my time. The